house guests, welcome to today's BBK9 updates and spoilers. Our house guests of the day are Paul Woods and Robin S. Yesme. Thank you both so much for the support. We could not do this without you and we appreciate it so, so much. So thank you again. And if you guys want to be house guests of the day, check out our Patreon link in the info box below. All right, so lots to talk about here, guys. Lots to talk about. When we left off yesterday, the house guests all decided that they were going to call a house meeting to call out Josh for campaigning? <laughs> what? It was like the dumbest house meeting ever. Um, check out yesterday's spoiler video for more details because I went into it pretty in depth there. But here are the main points. Jed was really running this whole thing and he was asking anyone who's thrown out his name as a target this week to raise their hand because people are really going to admit that they wanted to target you in front of your face. But, um, also, Josh was saying that Austin was involved in the initial conversations about the possibility of Pretty Boys 2.0 forming, and also that Austin, Brayden, Roe, and Kyle were all working together and targeting Jed. So, yeah, I just have to note, like, it's crazy that just calling out a potential guys alliance is now as much of a BB sin as like being in a girls alliance. Isn't that wild? But anyway, um, Josh was dropping some truth bombs in this house meeting, but the other house guests were trying to cover their asses with lies, especially Austin and Ro. So since it was like everybody versus Josh, they were all assuming like, yeah, Josh is the one that's lying. Like everybody else is telling the truth. People were realizing more and more like as they were further removed from that meeting that hmm, Josh was, ac was actually telling the truth about a lot of these things. Some of these things seem like they could actually be real. So anyway, um, at the end, Beth decreed that the house consensus is Josh is going this week. Who asked you, Beth? Um, but the whole meeting, again, was dumb and gross and honestly really painful to watch. And uh, let's move on. So after the meeting, Josh and Jed were still talking. And Jed's saying he doesn't believe that people were throwing out his name. Um, he says, if that were true, I would be on the block. You know, Austin would have just put me up. I don't know. He's saying that he doesn't believe this stuff, but seems to me like he's paranoid that it could be true. And I mean, people have been dropping his name this week. Um, so, I mean, by calling this meeting... Jed really just proved that he is an emotional player and people were already suspecting it and now they're going to use it against him because they know that he will blow up the second he hears anybody is uh, mentioning his name. So Josh says, I'm not lying. You know, you can watch this back. Um, you're going to get voted out of here eventually for what you just pulled. Oh. And Jed is still saying like, no, I can't be manipulated by people. people no, people can't manipulate me. Uh-huh. So then uh, Victoria and Ty were chatting in the ball pit and they were talking about what Josh would do if he were to be the one to stay this week and if he won the next HOH. So they're like, okay, I think he would put up Austin and Jed, right? I mean, that makes sense. So Victoria, sorry, it's been a long day. Victoria says, um, I think for your or yours and Jed's game, it's probably best for you to keep Josh because he'll be a shield for you. You know, he's a huge target in front of everybody else while he's still here. And nobody seems to know, like, who the new targets are that are going to emerge uh, if Josh goes this week. So they're all, like, crapping their pants about that. So Ty says, I don't know if it would be good for Jed. <laughs> After everything that went that just went down, I don't know. But Victoria says, okay, say Josh does win HOH and puts up Austin and Jed, we could use the POV on Jed because Josh wouldn't even be able to play in the POV competition anyway because the HOH doesn't play. And Ty says, yeah, and then I guess we could vote to keep Austin, like, depending on who is up next to her. But then they're like, I don't know, maybe, maybe we should just vote Josh out. But there still seems to be a sense of, like, we're not totally ruling out the vote flip yet. So Victoria mentions, you know what? Austin looked really shook during that house meeting. It was almost like she was lying. Mm. And Ty is like, well, where did Josh come up with all this shit? 
And Victoria says, maybe, because it's true? And then they laugh about that, but they're also kind of like, maybe it was. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're wondering if some of it actually was true, and yes, um, some of it was true. So then Austin and Jed were clearing the air in the HOH room because a lot of, you know, accusations were flying during that house meeting. And Austin says, I swear to you, not a word of what Josh said down there in that meeting was true. That's a lie. Um, but Jed agrees, yeah, there's no way any of that was true. We're just going to move on now. So <laughs> Victoria and Josh were chatting in the OLG room and it sounds like Josh campaigned to her in between campaigning to Jed and the house meeting. So she didn't want Josh to think that all of this blew up and they had this house meeting because she told everyone what they talked about, all about his campaigning. He's like, no, I understand. Like, we're good. Um, Josh says, Jed really showed his cards, though, today. Yeah. So Victoria says, I think you still have a shot at staying in this game. Not even Josh and ya. <sighs> so she says, people are scared shitless about next week. They want a shield. They don't know who's going to be going up once you're gone. So Victoria says, I don't want you to go. Once you're gone, WTF is going to happen. So Josh says, yeah, everybody is still safe while I'm here. You know, people are going to keep putting me up on the block over and over again. So Josh is like, you know what? I'm, I'm not really planning on, like, talking to anyone else. I'm not really planning on campaigning to anyone else. Like, what's the point? And Victoria's like, um, I think you should talk to Ty because he thinks he could possibly be a target next week. So maybe talk to him, see if you can get something going. And, um... Uh, yeah, see where that takes you. So then LaToya and Tina were chatting and LaToya's like, well, any talks about a potential vote flip are pretty much not on the table anymore, you know, after that whole thing blew up. So she says people also need to realize there wasn't really a point in calling a house meeting. This is the game. This is Big Brother. Josh was just playing. You know, he was just trying to campaign to stay. He's not just going to roll over and die. So she says everyone in this house is lying in some shape or form. Isn't it funny that LaToya is always talking about how she wants to play an honest game and all this. And, like, she's she's going to try not to lie if she doesn't have to. But, like, she's lying about her career and everything. I mean, it's not, like, super game related. But, you know. I also noticed that LaToya keeps slipping and calling people's microphones radios. Which... Since we know that she's a cop, I'm like, oh, that's a cop thing. Like, they wear their radios, so she's kind of, like, slipping up there. But if you weren't thinking about it, like, if you didn't know that already, you probably wouldn't even notice. But I heard her say that today. Anyway, um, yeah. So Latoya's like, what? You're going to call a meeting every time you hear that somebody's targeting you? Just brush it off and move along. And Tina's like, yeah, what are they going to have a house meeting every single week? Thank you. So they both see, like, that was ridiculous, and Jed should not have done that. So then, uh, Jed and Ty were having a game chat in the backyard, and they're starting to plan for next week, and they're realizing, yeah, it could get really, really ugly if the teams are still in place next week, especially if Team Destiny wins again. Um, they're figuring if it is gonna be Destiny winning, they're hoping that Tina will be the HOH since they're working with her. And they feel like she wouldn't be in as tough of, bleh, in as tough of a position as other people on their team would be. But they really want to throw the HOH to LaToya, if possible, so that Team Defender would be winning. Um, because they don't think that she would be in as much hot water with her nominations. You know, they see this as the path of least resistance. She doesn't have as many ties to other people. Um, I don't think that Tina and LaToya will be into this plan. And I got some confirmation here because Ty was telling Tina about it and then Tina was talking to LaToya about it. And guess what? Toya and Tina, not into it. They feel like it's super sketchy that the guys are trying to get them to do their dirty work. You know, what's up with that? Um, they're not feeling that. But the guys agree it's not their job to take out Kyle. The girls need to do that. Other people from the team need to do that. So, yeah. Um, then they talk about the Josh stuff. 
And Jed's like, you know what, I think it, it might actually be possible that Rohan really did throw out my name as a potential target, because we haven't really talked much game. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, they want Latoya to win HOH and take out Kyle. In other news, uh, Kyle and Rohan both told Josh that, you know, we're good on a personal level. No hard feelings. It's a game. We can be civil, which is nice. It's refreshing that they don't have to carry this into the way that they're like treating each other or just on a human level. So Kyle and Ro then go up to the HOH room to chat and they're like, holy crap, man, that house meeting. Um, <laughs> they say they didn't discuss some of this stuff with Josh before. He's just got some crazy intuition because a lot of the stuff that he was saying well, it's true, but they're saying they didn't talk to him about it. So, yeah, they're talking about how a lot of the things he said are actually kind of true. Um, they are trying to get an alliance going with Austin and Brayden that hasn't been solidified yet. They do want to get Jed out sooner rather than later, and uh, they feel like Jed is an emotional player. He's a threat to go far into this game, and Ro says that Jed is his target. Ro says, if I make it through week two, shit is hitting the fan. But he quickly walked that back, like, a minute later and was like, well, I mean, we gotta see what happens. It depends on, like, who wins or whatever. So, yeah, um, they both agree they'd be pretty nervous if Beth or LaToya were to win HOH because they feel like at least one of them would be going up on the block. I think that's a pretty fair bet. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> it's time for the showman's report. Beth is now kissing Ty and Jed. And she's been telling the cameras that this is part of her strategy. She's trying to keep both of them close. But it's getting like kind of weird. And I'm not even saying on Beth's end. Like if that's what she's doing, then whatever. But I know for a fact that Ty, no, sorry, that Jed is aware that she's also got something going on with Ty. I don't know if that's true both ways. But Jed was like asking her who was a better kisser. And like Jed said he wanted to one up Ty. So he, like, kissed Beth again, and then he was, like, celebrating, saying the score was, like, two to one now. Yikes. Um, are you supposed to be friends with Ty? Like, I don't know. It's just really weird, and, like, is this a threat ball? I don't know. So, anyway, um, the house guests were watching more TikToks in the backyard, and they were all, like, former house guests, and then clips from past seasons, so I don't know if this is for an upcoming competition, or what, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, but guess what? Josh is not giving up. He was talking to the cameras last night about his plan to still try and campaign to stay. So you need six votes to stay this week or uh, five for a tie, but I'm, I think it's pretty safe to say that Austin is not gonna keep Josh if it came down to it. Um, so he knows also he's not gonna get Kyle or Brayden on his side. So his plan here is to work on Ty Jed, Toya, Tina, Tara, and then either Victoria or Kiefer. So he's like, I need to convince Jed that I will be an asset for him because he's, he's probably not just going to be convinced by me being a bigger target sticking around. You know, I got to be able to bring something else to the table. Um, he's also going to continue pushing that Austin is going to be his target so he can make sure everybody else feels safe. And he wants to push that he's going to be a shield for people. Uh, he's open to going up on the block as a pawn whenever they need him. So this morning, welcome to Waffle Wednesday. Oh my goodness. So Josh started making the campaign rounds. I gotta give him props for like staying so calm during that house meeting and then still like not giving up. That's awesome. Um, so we talked to Kiefer, Tina, Toya, and Tara this morning. Um, not all at once. There were a couple different conversations in there, but he was like, all right, guys, I want to let you know, um, I'm going to be a, a target moving forward and I'm more than happy to take the heat off of you guys and be a shield for you. Uh, you can put me up on the block whenever you can throw me under the bus. I don't care. And of course, like I said, he let them know that Austin is his biggest target along with whoever votes him out. Um, so he's asking them who's going to go up. If Team Destiny wins HOH again, if I'm still here, you can put me up on the block and then you only need to put up one other person. So after Josh is done pitching, uh, LaToya, Tina, and Tara discuss his pitch in the Expedia room and 
they all agree it makes a lot of sense. They're really liking the sound of it. Um, Latoya says that Kyle and Ro are going after the girls. They think that we're easy targets. That's not good. You know, maybe we should be splitting them up. And I'm sure part of this is also hearing Jed and Ty's plan that they want to throw the HOH to Toya so that she can make a move against those guys. She doesn't like that. So I'm sure that's playing into it as well. Like we need to split up these guys because they might all start working together. So um, yeah, they're liking that Josh would go up on the block if Team Destiny wins again. Also, they're thinking some of the stuff that Josh was saying during the house meeting was legit. You know, they're starting to, to think about it more and put the pieces together, and they're like, yeah, this is this is making more sense. Um, so it seems like they're down to maybe flip here. So then Josh continues his campaigning. He talks to Jed. He talks to Ty. And then we hit a little bit of a roadblock here. Uh, Jed and Tina were discussing the potential flip. You know, they were talking about Josh's, Josh's pitch. And Tina worries, again, that it's too early. Helen. Um, she's worried that this might expose the Alliance, and it's really freaking her out that all of the people that Josh is trying to get to vote for him to stay, because he's only talking to, like, six or seven people or whatever, all the people that he is trying to convince are the Sunsetters Alliance, except he's not talking to Beth, and he is talking to Tara. So he's talking to five out of six of the Sunsetters Alliance. She's like, does he know more than he's letting on? She's really not feeling comfortable about that. Um, so Jed's like, yeah, that's pretty crazy. He says, it's not worth it. Like, I don't think we should flip this vote. So then there have been a ton of other uh, Sunsetter discussions throughout the afternoon talking about this potential flip. And just to, like, consolidate a lot here, uh, Latoya and Kiefer are definitely on board for this flip. They are pushing for it. Jed and Tina against it. They're really freaked out that Josh almost named their alliance. Um, but it turns out that Kiefer had been planting seeds with Josh and trying to get Josh to talk to this group of people. Um, so yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. But Ty seems to be open to it. Beth wasn't really involved in the conversations until later in the day because Josh didn't campaign to her directly, so they didn't want to tell her right away. Um, but she seems on board to do this as well. So, okay, the Kiefer thing. Um, Tina and Jed seem to be more comfortable with it now that Kiefer has explained how he planted the seeds with Josh. He was like, Josh is not seeing us all as one big group. He sees us as these little groups that he could kind of like pull together. So, He's saying, Josh sees me, Kiefer, as like a lone wolf, whatever. Tina and Tara together. And then Toya, uh, Josh, not Josh, Toya, Jed, and Ty together. Um, so he said that's where that's all coming from. And they seem a lot more comfortable with it after hearing that. Also, it doesn't hurt that Kiefer is telling Tina, hey, wake up. Ro and Kyle might nominate you if one of them were to win HOH. And she's like, well, they're talking to me, though. Like, they want to work with me. And Kiefer's like, yeah, but they're trying to work with, like, a lot of people. And they want to put up girls or women. So, um, yeah. Tina seems a lot more comfortable with it now that she knows that Rohan has been throwing her name around as a potential nominee. So, right now, it's looking like it could be a 7-3 to three vote for Josh to stay, and I'm gonna be surprised if Victoria is not in on this as well, because she was telling him before that she wants him to stay, so I don't know if maybe she'll be brought in at the last second or not, um, or she's gonna be in the dark again, but yeah, Victoria, Brayden, and Kyle would all be on the outs with that vote. Um, we'll see if this flip holds, though. You never know what could happen, but we've got the eviction tomorrow, and at this point, it looks like Josh could be staying, so... That's going to be an amazing flip if he can pull that off. Um, it's going to be wild. But let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. And until tomorrow, much love.